I'm uh, Jordan Shaw. I'm Jamie's brother. Uh, Jamie was born on December 26th, 1973. Jamie was uh, three, three years old. And his spleen was uh, like three times its normal size. And of course, he walks to the hospital. So they met a vacuum to Vancouver. And that's, uh, that's the first time we found out that he had uh, leukemia. But it was uh, chronic myelogenous leukemia, which was, you know, it was manageable. And we were expecting him to have a, a full life. Like a year later, he got diagnosed with uh, acute myelogenous leukemia. And that's when things got uh, more serious and, and the treatment wasn't uh, just drugs. It was, uh, he had to have a, a, you know, a bone marrow transplant. And uh, it took a year, over a year to recover, which was, Yeah, pretty pretty hard on him. He he, uh, well, he, you know, he's uh, a pretty proud person, and, and uh, it was not an easy time. Like to recover from bone marrow transplant is a it's a significant challenge, and, and he met it with uh, the same you know uh, commitment that uh, he he you know met every challenge with. He just uh, accepted his reality and, and, and took steps to, to make sure that he was able to, to come back and, and have a, a quality of life. He did his level best to not make any struggle that he was experiencing anybody else's problem ever. Um, you knew sometimes, but you knew if you were paying attention, you didn't know because he complained about things or or made anybody feel like he had some kind of burden. It, <laughs> he was so willing to take everybody else's burdens, and I don't mean that in a, in a really like martyr sort of way, but, but to be a part of what was going on with you and offer some support and you know, be there and listen to what you had to say and maybe have a few words of his own. But he didn't, he didn't go looking for a lot of that from a lot of other people. I know he had some people who supported him, but he didn't go searching out uh, support for his problems so much as he went searching out people that he could support. And one of the best guys I know is one of the best coaches I know. I know because uh, always push you to be better um, and he wouldn't take your he wouldn't take less than your best effort because because he was also always putting in his best effort so in order to work with that you really had to be the best version of yourself because that's what he expected uh, I, I just think that uh, when people are talking about Jamie it's uh, I mean no one's perfect and, and uh, I'm not saying that everyone's saying he's perfect, but I mean, he was a human, but he gave his best every day. And he, uh, he tried to, uh, to be the best gym teacher and tried to be the best vice principal. And I think as, if, if anyone learns anything from, from Jamie is that uh, if you are trying your best every day and if you don't make it to your best, that's okay but as long as you're trying. But if you're just kind of farming it in, uh, then you're kind, of, uh, you're kind of cheating yourself a little bit. He used to say, like, correction doesn't mean rejection, so if he corrects you, then it doesn't mean he's, he's trying to, like, bring you down. He just wants, wants you to, like, get better and just push yourself. I think if he could, like, motivate kids into doing what they love, even if they didn't know they loved it yet, like, just being a part in how they grew and stuff like that was so beneficial to him and just rewarded him every day for that. Yeah, Jamie, when he'd walk into the gym, he'd, you'd immediately know Jamie was in the gym. So he'd be yelling at you, making fun of you, saying something. He was always super energetic and just had this presence about him that I've never ever 
felt from anyone else. And being able to be around him a lot was infectious, how he made you feel. You see Sherry, he's like, it's all about making people feel good, which, like I said, I, I really admired, but that's what he would say, it's all about making people feel good. So he would, he was able to just do that all the time. Um, he also, of course, had such resilience, like such resilience and strength and, and positivity and, and work ethic. And he was, he was something, that's for sure. Special. Like we needed, we, everyone needs that. And sometimes people don't have, like have that elsewhere in their lives and to have that one person who is constantly like bringing your energy up and making you feel special even if you didn't play basketball or even if you didn't know him like personally just having someone who can like spark your mood and make you so much happier was just is so beneficial yeah anybody who knew him was lucky to have yeah. because he just he was great we wanted to make something that Jimmy would be proud of up here, that he would be happy to have his name associated with. And that is a tournament that brings a lot of teams in, that has an atmosphere, that has a, um, a culture around it that everyone, the community, not just the school community, but the entire community embodies this tournament for that weekend. And you bring in the best teams you can, you bring in the best players you can, you get everyone to compete and just play basketball. And that's what Jamie, like I think in my opinion, that Jamie really would have wanted.